Welcome back to the Aubergine Chef. Now today, we'll be making carrot cake with cream cheese icing. And I've already gone ahead and weighed out all the ingredients. Um, I've also prepared my two 9-inch cake pans. I sprayed them with pan spray. And I've also put a little piece of parchment paper in the middle. That's all you really need to do to line a cake pan. Because it's if it sticks in the middle, that's your biggest problem. So if it doesn't stick in the middle, the rest of it will come down. And the sides, you know, your pan spray helps there. But you're also, you can use some run, unrun a knife around it. Plus, after your cake comes out of the oven, sometimes it'll pull away from the sides. So really, the only place you really need to uh, put parchment paper is right in the middle. Okay, so here I have my some of my dry ingredients. I have flour, baking powder, and baking soda. Um, I have two cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of baking soda, um, or 11 ounces of all-purpose flour, and an eighth of an ounce each of baking powder and baking soda. And then we're going to go ahead and let that sift through. Okay, and to that we're going to add two cups of sugar, or one pound of sugar, and a teaspoon each of salt and, and ground cinnamon, or an eighth of an ounce of each of ground cinnamon and salt. And before we head over to the mixer, let's go ahead and go over the rest of our ingredients. I have one cup or seven and a half ounces of vegetable oil. I have four eggs. And I have three cups or 15 ounces of ground carrot. Now, you can also use shredded carrot if you like that, but I find that shredded carrot is a little unsightly when it comes to carrot cake because it kind of looks like something's coming out of your cake. So I usually like to ground my carrots up in the food processor. And carrots usually come in bag bags of 16 ounces or one pound. So you can probably get away with just, um, just the one pound bag because remember that you're going to peel and you're going to cut off the top or the uh, stem of the carrot. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're buying your carrots. So you want to get more than 15 ounces because you're going to have to, this is the 15 ounces is the prepared, ground up, and ready to use um, ground carrot that we're going to use for our uh, cakes. So why don't we go ahead and go over to the mixer. So meanwhile, while you're getting your cakes ready, uh, your batter ready, you want your oven preheating to 325 degrees. You want them, you want to have the middle rack ready for the cake pans, and on the rack below it is an empty sheet pan, and that sheet pan is going to help balance out the heat of your oven. So why don't you go ahead and blend your ingredients together. And what's great about this recipe is it's almost like the blitz method where you can go ahead and just put the rest of the ingredients in. So our seven and a half ounces of vegetable oil, our four eggs, and our 15 ounces of carrots. Now if you get a little less than 15 ounces, let's say you get 14 or 13 and a half ounces of carrots, it should be okay. You just don't want to go too much further lower than that, and you don't want to go too much higher than probably a couple ounces over. Okay, we're going to go ahead and mix this on low until all the ingredients are mixed together. And then we're going to kick it up to medium speed and mix it for about two minutes. Two minutes, let's go ahead and take it off. Okay, let's go ahead and pour this into the cake pans. Okay. And before we go into the oven, let me just go ahead and mention this. I forgot to say, for those of you who have never really used a food processor all that often, remember that when you're grounding up your carrots, that you don't want to put, like, whole carrots in there. You want to make sure you break it up into pieces. Not just because it fits, but because it helps them break it up and, and uh, chop it up faster. And if you just put big chunks in there, sometimes they'll get stuck on the blade, and sometimes they'll get pushed to the sides. So if they're all about the same size, 
um, it helps um, make sure they're all um, equally ground up into little pieces. Plus, after you ground it up, make sure you sift through the pieces to make sure there's no chunks that didn't actually get ground up. So anyway, let me go ahead and put this in the oven. Remember, we're going to put this on the middle rack with the empty rack or empty sheet pan on the rack below it. And um, we're putting it in for at 325 degrees for about 40 minutes. Okay, so meanwhile, while our carrot cakes are baking, why don't we go ahead and start on some of the decorations we're going to put on our cake. Here I have some orange uh, fondant. Um, if you don't want to use, if you don't want to buy just orange fondant, you can also get uh, white fondant and color it orange. Just make sure that you're using the um, the food paste or the uh, food coloring paste, not regular food coloring, because you want to make sure there's not a whole lot of water in it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make basically just like these little carrots really easy to make. Start off with the ball and then using the heel or the bottom of your palm go ahead and roll it into a V shape. Just like that. And if you want, what you can do is you can take a little paring knife and you can kind of draw lines across it to try to give it that carrot look to make it look more realistic, if you want. It's totally up to you. Now, you can also make uh, fondant leaves, green leaves, obviously, for your carrots if you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make um, cream cheese icing for this, and I'm going to color a little bit of it green and pipe on some of it, so that way it's like one less thing I have to do. And that way, because I know I'm going to have a little bit of extra cream cheese icing anyway. What you can also do is take a ball and then kind of like flatten it against the cake to create kind of a dome shape and then you know draw your lines if you want. And this will be kind of like a carrot that's like still in the ground. And what we'll do is we'll pipe leaves coming up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my cake in, into ten slices. So I'll need five regular carrots and then five of the still in the ground carrots. Okay. Also what you can do to get ready while your cakes are in the oven is you can go ahead and make your walnuts to put on the side and top of your cake if you want. Um, the walnuts are completely optional. You can also add um, some ground walnuts into the cake batter. I think about half a cup to maybe a cup is probably about as much as you want to do. Um, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to just like push it, push it into the side of the icing and sprinkle a little bit on the top to give it some more dimension. Um, what you want to do is you want to take um, 12 ounces of walnuts. You don't really need that much after all. 12 ounces of walnuts and you want to toast them in the oven. You want to make sure you toast them because it gets a little bit more flavor out of them, helps bring the oils out, and helps darken them a little bit, cook them a little bit, so that way they have more flavor, they're a little bit more earthy tasting. And um, you toast them in the oven about at 400 degrees for about 8 to 10 minutes, then you let them cool off and you grind them up in the food processor. And that's pretty much it. No, no big deal there. Now if you're doing a whole lot of nuts, um, especially if they're already ground up, then you want to make sure that you have a heat-resistant rubber spatula so that way you can stir them up halfway through and you might need to bake it a little bit longer, like 12 to 14 minutes. Just keep an eye on it to make sure you're not burning, you're not burning your walnuts. Okay, so our cakes came out of the oven and they've been resting on uh, some wire cooling racks for about 10 minutes. Um, so now it's time to take them out. Go ahead and run a knife along the sides if you need to. And the easiest way to do this is to put the wire cooling rack on top of the cake and then flip the whole thing over. And then if you need to, go ahead and give it a good strong whack. And then it should pop right out. It looks like my parchment paper got shifted from the middle. Probably happened when I put the batter in. Anyway. So that's pretty much all it takes to get them out. Now we're going to go ahead and let them cool all the way down to room temperature while we make the icing.
Okay, so let's go ahead and make the cream cheese icing. I'm actually going to use the cream cheese filling recipe from the pumpkin roll episode, but I'm actually going to um, triple it in order to use it for the uh, carrot cake. So the first thing, I've already weighed out all my ingredients. Um, as you, Here you can see 13 and a half ounces of powdered sugar, but we're going to actually put that in last. So we're actually going to hold this to the side. And we're going to put in nine ounces of butter. This has been softened to room temperature and actually I did it in the microwave. I just cut it up into about two ounce pieces and I warmed it up in the microwave for about 30 seconds. Okay and then we need three packages of uh, room temperature cream cheese um, which comes out to be a pound one pound eight ounces and I'm actually using Neufchatel. Um, as you may know from my other episodes I like to use Neufchatel. Neufchatel is just one third fat less one-third less fat cream cheese it's soft at um, even when it's cold so it's great to work with and I think it has a little bit of a better texture okay then we need about three-eighths of an ounce of vanilla extract so a couple of teaspoons okay and then the powdered sugar we're gonna sift right in Okay, so using whip attachment, we're going to go ahead and whip it until it's fluffy cream cheese icing. Go ahead and start on slow or low so that way your ingredients get mixed up and you don't have your powder, powdered sugar kicking up everywhere. And then once everything is moistened, then you can go ahead and kick it up to a higher speed. Okay, I went ahead and whipped it on high for a good three minutes and it's nice and light and fluffy so we can go ahead and start icing if our cake is cool enough okay to begin icing what you're going to do is you're going to take a damp paper towel put it on your turntable I have a nine inch cake cardboard and what this does is it helps prevent the cardboard from slipping around while you're icing your cake so we're going to take our first layer What you can do is put some of the cream cheese icing on the bottom and use that as a kind of glue for the cake. Now this cake is fairly soft so I'm just going to turn it over and kind of just flatten it down with my hand so that way we don't have to cut it with the, sh uh, with the uh, serrated knife. If you want to you can. You can cut off the bottom or the top and make it even more flat but we can go ahead and compensate for that with our icing so that way we can skip a step and make it a little bit quicker. Plus, that way we're not wasting any icing. Now normally at this point I would put some simple syrup onto the cake, but this cake is pretty moist, so we don't have to worry about that, especially since it just came out of the oven. So we can go ahead and skip that step as well, and we can go straight to adding on the icing. So go ahead and start with a good chunk of icing, put it right on the top, spread it out, and then while turning the turntable, apply some steady pressure, well it's sliding, and spread it out. Okay, take your next cake layer, put it right on top. Start off with a little extra icing on the top. You're kind of using your um, offset metal spatula like a um, snowplow. My cake is sliding around quite a bit. Okay, and then you want to begin putting icing on the side of your cake. To do that, you want to put it on your offset spatula and then reach over and kind of just press it into the cake.
Okay, once you think you have a good layer on the side, next thing you want to do is you want to take your bench scraper and you kind of want to follow, use the cardboard, the cake cardboard as a guide, and kind of use that to smooth out the side. Now if your cake doesn't line up with the cardboard exactly, you're going to have to use some, some uh, creative um, estimations and kind of push up against the cake slightly, but not to the point where you can see the cake. So anywhere that you can see the cake, you know that you went a little too close. So all you have to do is just go back over and patch it up. Okay, so then you go back to the top of the cake, and then what you need to do is you need to get rid of that lip formed around the edge of the cake from icing the sides. And all you do is you just take the side and you just push it, or take the lip, and you just push it to the center of the cake. Now don't worry too, too much about the edges of the cake, since we'll be covering them up with walnuts and a shell border. So you don't have, you won't worry about seeing that too much. And you know, you don't really want, you don't have to push yourself to have the most perfect cake ever either. Just ice the cake to the best of your ability. And then use decorations to cover up any mess, uh, any areas that you mess up a little bit. So our cake is pretty much iced. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called a cake comb. And a cake comb allows us to put a nice design on the side of the cake. And all you do is you just lightly press into the cake, holding your hand still and turning the turntable. Okay, and that gives us a nice, interesting border on the side of the cake. Okay, now at this point, you want to go ahead and put it on the tray or the dish or whatever you're going to be using to serve it, especially if you don't have a cake cardboard that's wider than the cake. And this is that way that, so that when you move the cake around, you can still have that shell border on the bottom that we're going to put on. And actually, that reminds me but before we put the shell border on, we want to go ahead and put the walnut um, layer on the, along the edge. So all we're going to do is we're going to go to our walnuts, and we're just going to push in. I like to do half moon shapes if I can. Sometimes it's hard to see if I'm getting the whole shape. And I might get a little bit of a weird shape. And you want to tap it too to get rid of any excess walnuts that may not have stuck to the cake. And I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit on the top of the cake as well. Okay, and then I'm going to use an 823 star tip. And I'm going to pipe a shell border on the bottom and on the top. Now when you're piping a shell border, you want to squeeze and then you kind of want to go up or back, up forward and then back, kind of like a sideways J. And you kind of want to let go towards the end and kind of stop squeezing towards the end so that way you get a little bit of a tail. You're not really sticking it to the cake because the walnuts are going to keep it from sticking to the cake. Just kind of try and pipe it around it so that way it gives it kind of a finished look. And we're going to go ahead and do that same design on the top of the cake.
Okay, now at this point, we can go ahead and put on our cake decorations. Now you can either visualize um, where the 10 pieces are going to go, or you can use a knife and imprint it onto the cake. Okay, and my slices are a little bit off. These are going to be a little bit bigger than these, but that's okay. Um, now, when I'm putting in my carrots that are still underground, I'm kind of pushing into the icing to kind of create a mound around it, so that way it looks like they're actually inside the icing. Okay, and then for the ones that are still on the ground, I'm going to go ahead and just pipe strands. They go straight up. Kind of like if I was using a grass tip. You can also use a leaf tip if you want. And then on the ones that are lying on the ground, I'm going to kind of build it up off the bottom of the cake, or the top of the cake, I should say. Okay, and that's the finished decorated carrot cake. Okay, so that's how you make a carrot cake, or at least this version of a carrot cake. Um, remember that since the, uh, there's cream cheese in the icing that you're going to have to refrigerate it, and even though it's um, going to get, the icing's going to get a little stiff in the refrigerator because of the butter and the cream cheese, um, it's not always easy to let the cake defrost or thaw out, I should say, to room temperature. So sometimes the best thing to do is just to cut the slice that you're going to have and just eat it as it is. Especially since if you use Neufchatel, it's going to be a little bit softer than if you use cream cheese, um, even if it is cold. So you have that to your advantage. Okay, and as you and as some of you may already know, you can always get the recipes for all of my um, episodes on my website, www.theauberginechef.com. And I hope you learned a lot today. Thanks for watching. And remember, the aubergine chef, demystifying dessert, one recipe at a time.